Are the Bears for real, or are they one of those surprise teams that has that, you know, out of nowhere, great season, but goes one and done, a la the Rams last year? There's other examples that we can come up with that have this really surprise season, the good record, and then they lose that home playoff game, and you're like, man, you know, they came out of nowhere, and then, boom, they go one and out. Let's bring in John Mullen from NBC Sports Chicago. He's around this team all the time. He joins us now to give us a little bit more perspective. John, is this Bears team one that is one of those surprise teams that just had a nice regular season? Or are they one of those surprise teams that could really surprise us and make a deep playoff run? You know, I, I have no idea. And I've seen this team for 20, 25 years, and I've seen those one-and-done one, one and done kind of years. In fact, the old one well, the Eagles came to Chicago and, and upset them in the division round with the Hugh Douglas, Jim Miller thing, and they never recovered. It took them to coaching changes and everything else. Uh, and, we, and we've seen, you know, the Jaguars this year, last year, the Raiders one year. There's so much of that in this league. And I, I, I kind of use the, the league doesn't feel like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and, but there's no Snow White. It's a whole bunch of dwarfs. And so, so anybody can kind of jump up or stand up on a stool and whack somebody in the head for a year or two. But I don't know because is their quarterback, is Kovisky, how good can he be? Is he, you know, he's not as good as Deshaun Watson and, and Pat Mahomes at this point, I, you'd say. And, that, and that's kind of as far as they can go. So much is made of the defense, but this has been all about the development of the quarterback, which is why they brought Matt Baggy in here. So. I, I don't have a good answer. You know, if I if I did, I'd be taking this call on my boat in Bimini somewhere. <laughs> we'll well, find out. I don't know. well, if there is a flaw that is concerning for playoff football, what is that? Uh, that that offense um, too streaky. Trubisky. He came back from two two weeks off with shoulder injury, and he got too geeked up for the Rams, and he threw three picks, and, they, and the defense prevailed, but it was a terrible game. Um, I, I don't know that they're elite in, in the offense. I see Zach Ertz, and I see Alshon Jeffrey, and I don't think the Bears don't have anybody at either of those positions that are as good, and I admit, you know, Tate and whatever. I, I, I'm not sure that they can take their game to, another, to a playoff level. I'm not sure they have that in them at this point. You know, defense is travel, but the Bears this year, the, the teams have put up big points on them, with the exception of Miami, when they admitted they really just took their foot off the gas when they found out that Tannehill wasn't playing. Think about it. it was the, the big, biggest point totals were from Aaron Rodgers in game one, Tom Brady with, when they played the Pats, and uh, Eli Manning when they lost to the Giants. All those guys, when they were up against Super Bowl quarterback, guys with rings, they flopped. I mean, the defense couldn't handle it. And now they get enough. You know, Nick Foles has one of those things. So I, I, I'm not sure they're as good on defense. You know, it's funny around Chicago. Everybody, as soon as the defense looks good, hey, how, how's it compared to the '85 team? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not sure that you know the Reggie and Buddy and those. The, they're not as good as the Eagles teams of the late '80s. But the, but the point is, I, I'm not sure if they're strong enough. If Trubisky can raise his game without kind of losing control, he's a young quarterback. You want these guys to be geeked up. You know, we watch Mahomes jumping around and Watson and, and, and Lamar Jack. You want that energy, but with Trubisky, it hasn't always translated into performance. I don't know that they can take their game to a playoff level, and that's really the biggest thing I'd worry about on Sunday. You know, when you, the more you talk about it, John, it, it kind of validates the discussion Mike and I were having before, and that we've heard a little bit here on the Delaware Valley where this matchup, it was almost kind of a mirror image from a you know preview standpoint from last year's three six game, where you had the upstart Rams. I think seven wins for the Rams from the year before, same as the Bears this year. First year offensive minded head coach, second year quarterback really coming into his own. Uh, sage defensive coordinator last year was Wade Phillips. This year Vic Fangio, and clearly the team yeah. that had the playoff exp- and both both six seeds by the way were in the Super Bowl the year before uh, last year with the Falcons. So it almost feels like. If you were to use that as a template, you can make a really legitimate argument for why the experience of the Eagles here would really come in handy against the youth and the experience of Nagy and and Trubisky and, and all and some of the players who are on the Bears who are young. Yeah, I, I do. I, again, we can make too much out of experience, and you know, people can you know all takes is one or two guys. Let's say you know Khalil Mack has a three sack day and a strip sack TD mm-hmm. or whatever, and things and things like. 
you know, they force a, a force a turnover here and there, and that and that switches the game. But yeah, I, I, I do place great stock in that. The that the Eagles have so many guys who have done it. Um, the Bears have talent, but you know, Akeem Hicks has even said, you know, he's one of their best defensive linemen. He said, I've been in the league seven years. This is all my third trip to the playoffs. Um, I, I think that counts for something. I think getting back to the overall, when you've had experience at this level, you know how to take your game to the next level without changing the things that got you made you successful. If that makes any sense? Because Nagy wants to keep them the same, and yet you know you've got to play your best game because. It's not the same as the regular season. Now, every team you play is there because they can beat you. And, you know, I used to cover a horse racing for a while, and like I never remember, I also remember the, the Arlington Million had all these upsets. And a trainer once told me the reason is these kind of long shots. He said, everybody in this field, every horse in this field has won. So they can always beat you. And I would apply that to football. Yeah, there's, the, the Bears have not shown themselves to be that dominant team. I don't think they're as dominant as the Rams were last year. Do you? I mean, I'd, 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 maybe defensively, as opposed to, as opposed to the way the Rams were so dominant offensively last year. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good point. You know, isn't it funny, guys? You think about? I thought the Rams would take the next step. You know, Aaron Donald did, but they bring in Indama Kuksu, Marcus mm-hmm. Peters, Akeem Tlee. Wow, that's going to how'd that work out? Oops. So I, <laughs> I mean, they're obviously the number two seed. But again, I'm not sure that they're still white. I think they're just one of the dwarfs too. Yeah, and it's interesting because they probably and and th- these will be questions for the Bears next year, right? Because the Rams then had to play this year a first place schedule, and the Bears yeah. obviously played a fourth, and we'll play a first place, and we'll see their kind of development next year. I guess well, what yeah. I'm wondering from out of Chicago is, do the Bears, from what they're saying, do they seem to fear Zach Ertz more, or is it Alshon Jeffrey who has really been kind of their catalyst for the last four weeks? with Nick Foles now a quarterback? Uh, probably Ertz. Uh, you know, you won't get guys to actually say that on the record, but you know, mm-hmm. 100, what, 150, 116 catch tight end. Um, and, and I always remember Bill Walsh, you know, Bill wrote that the least understood part of that West Coast offense was the tight end. He said, that was the tip of the spear. I can aim it wherever I want to. I can break it down in the middle. I can go deep if I get a safe, you know, a linebacker matchup. That's the one that's going to be the most trouble for the Bears. I mean, they know what Jeffrey is, and you know, six foot three inch receiver is always going to be—he's open when he breaks the huddle. <laughs> but it's the tight end. That's a matchup problem. And I'm the guy. The, to me, the key for the Bears, obviously, it's you know, Mac and the pass rush and all that. Yeah, yeah. But it's Roquan Smith. You know, the rookie inside linebacker who's got the speed to stay with Ertz. He's not as tall, but he's been their leading tackler. He's had five sacks. That might be a wild card matchup. But yeah, Ertz. They're just that's just a tough matchup. The guy in in the red zone, who, who's going to cover? Uh, John Mullen covers the Chicago Bears, NBC Sports Chicago. John, um, why the Eagles? Did they prefer the Eagles? I mean, they could have handled this differently, so they wouldn't have had to face the Eagles. It feels like people are like, "Hey, you let the Super Bowl champions in. Why would you do that?" Yeah. I think in hindsight, it's funny you mentioned that because that has been written or talked about a, a lot among people. They should have just let, you know, just tanked against the Vikings and then played them again. Um, you know, would you rather play Nick Foles and the Eagles or would you rather play Kirk Cousins? Gee, let, let's think about that one. Um, yeah, I think they would rather play the, play the Vikings. Um, but I think what, what you what you saw was Nagy wanting to keep this, that, that violin tuned all the way up. And that's why they didn't take their foot off the gas. They, they, they played it. Um, they played to win. And I don't think they were really looking past anybody. I think here's the big, the one thing about the Vikings is that should, we, should they have let them in? Yeah, yeah. But that's a defense that can also win on the road. Um, even though they would have, they beat them once, and they obviously if they if they lost, they would have had to play them again. But I, I don't know. I, I don't think Nagy was even thinking that way. He said, "How do I get this violin tuned up right to pitch?" And that meant playing all out, playing the game against the Vikings, and they'll just take what they get with the Eagles. So, uh, John, I, I, and personally, I think the Bears did the right thing because had they tanked that game and lost, then the narrative would have been, oh, my God, you now have to go play the team that just beat yeah. you, even though it was your backups, but now you let them win three in a row to end the season. You let them get hot. They're rallying around their fired offensive court. I mean, there would have been all sorts of narratives about the danger of a division opponent three times and, and all that thing. Well, it happened to them in 2010. They, they they took gas against the Packers, kind of let the Packers in the playoffs, um, and then who they lose to in the NFC Championship game. Right. So, so uh, you know that can happen. And 
you know, it's funny. I mean, I, you almost weren't sure until you watched the Vikings game. You know, I think Kirk Cousins is in kind of the purple Jay Cutler, but I don't think you knew that until the game was over. So, yeah, you just gotta, you've got to play your hand the way it's dealt and, and not worry too much. Look, they're, here again, they're all dwarfs, so they can beat the Eagles just as well as they can beat the Vikings and yeah. vice versa. Uh, is that kind of, uh, you know, the narrative this week is, uh, look, we're the three seed and we're at home. It's been a great season, but, man, we got to play the Super Bowl champions. I mean, is it is it kind of uh, – are people kind of anxious about this matchup? Yeah, they should be. I mean, uh, and there's enough people around who remember what happened, like I said, in 01, and, and the Bears had a first-round buy in 05, and they, they, Carolina comes in town and, and whacks them. Um, so you do know what can happen. Um, yeah, I – there's a lot of anxiety. Chicago's been kicked around. <laughs> so, it's funny. I, I still remember the 85 team, uh, you know, opened the season 12-0, and 0, and no, nobody was believing it because if you think back, here they had the 69 Cubs, then they had the, the, the 80 the White Sox in 83. Went, they win by tw- the uh, American League West by 20 games. Then, then they gas out in the playoffs to the Orioles. In 84, the Cubs are up 2-0, 2-0 in the uh, – uh, division or NLCS, and they lose that to the. To, so the next year, the, the here come the '85 Bears. Nobody believes it. You know, so Chicago is kind of an inferiority complex. It's kind of a they kind of wait to get kicked. So I don't think anybody there. They, there's a lot of whistling past the graveyard going on in Chicago. But you know, they they've seen they they beat the Rams, and I think that was probably the first Vikings game and the Rams game. I think instilled like okay. We they really do have a good team here. Now, are they good enough to, to go to the next level, which they have to do in the playoffs? You know, like I said, that's why they have to play the game. John Mullen, NBC Sports, Chicago Eagles and Bears this Sunday right here on 97.3 ESPN. Merrill and Mike have the call. The coverage begins with the countdown to kickoff at 1 o'clock. John, enjoy the uh, football, my friend. Enjoy. Uh, what's the weather supposed to be like out there in Chi-Town? 45 degrees. I mean, man, I'm just, by the way, I, I was born in Bryn Mawr Hospital and spent most of my summers at the shore with Atlantic and Ocean City and Cape May. And, uh, nice. Like, wow, I like that. 45 degrees. Let's go to the beach. Come All on. right, man. We're, we're sitting on the yeah, beach right now, actually. <laughs> we're, we're, we're staring out the window of the Tropicana. The, the ocean is, is right as our backdrop. But you'll have the football hey, as yours on Sunday. Don't rub it in. Don't, don't <laughs> rub it in. Come on. Come on. Don't be as mean.